Well everyone, welcome back. We are here in video six of our Magical Beast series of paper mache sculptures. Art you can make at home with materials you have around the house. Now, if you haven't watched videos one through five, they're real brief 10 to five minute videos which walk you through the process of creating an idea, an armature, and then sculpting for yourself a magical beast that you are ready to paint or decorate. So this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about color application and how to decorate your magical beast now that you've got your sculpture done. So if you've watched the earlier videos, you know that one artist I was really inspired by was Walter Anderson. And this right here is a sculpture of a cat that he made out of ceramic clay. And in the first video, we talked about what made it magical, its pose or its gesture, and also the way the artist used all sorts of shapes and patterns and designs and unusual colors on the cat. I don't know about you, but I have not seen a purple or red cat walking down my street covered in flowers, and I have three of them. So Anderson is a great inspiration for us as we think about how we want to decorate our magical beast that we made. Now, there are three things you need to think about as you go ahead and you think about creating your magical beast. The first thing you need to think about is, what kind of feeling do you want your sculpture to have? You've thought about its movement, you've worked very carefully and very hard to build it. So now, what kind of mood or feeling? Is it gonna be a happy, perky sculpture? Is it maybe gonna be a little sad? Or maybe you want it to be super scary? That is up to you. Once you've decided the mood you want your piece to have, you have to decide about what colors you will choose that best express that mood. Now that's a hard decision. You can use a whole bunch of colors or you can stick to maybe just one color family. You can use colors that are very different and have a high color contrast because they're so starkly different. And I did that on this sculpture here. Or you can use colors that are more related. Maybe they're all blues or purples. Maybe they're all reds or oranges. Maybe they're all blacks and grays and browns. I don't know. That's up to you, but you've got to decide your color. And then finally, you have to look around the house and see what art supplies you have and decide, how am I going to apply my colors? Now, there's lots of ways to do that. You don't have to have stuff from a fancy art supply store to apply colors successfully. On this little sculpture right here, I went ahead and I applied my colors using only magic markers, water-based markers that probably a lot of y'all have in your coloring box and Sharpies. So I started with a Sharpie marker just like this. And thinking of Walter Anderson and thinking how I wanted to make my beast magical and how I kind of wanted it to have a sort of jaunty, excited feeling, I decided to start with a swirly pattern that I put all over my sculpture. So I did that first with black Sharpie. And it's just easy, I'll show you here. Because your sculpture is made out of paper mache, it takes drawing really well. You might think you don't draw on a sculpture, but you can. And in this case, I just pick it up. I'll add an extra swirl here. And I just went ahead and I drew right on it. Sometimes you've got to be a little patient because the sculpture is kind of bumpy. You might have to go back in and darken a spot, but it's really pretty easy. It's not, it's not difficult at all. After I went ahead and I applied my pattern and my design, with my Sharpie marker, I went ahead and I got plain old water-based markers. And folks, it's real simple. I simply color it in using my water-based coloring marker, just like I would use if I was gonna color a page of a coloring book. Now, one thing I have to caution you against, sometimes when we apply color, we just do a real quick scribble and then we say, I'm done, but guess what? You're not. You want paint a wall and leave a wall unpainted, you want to apply color to a sculpture and leave huge holes and gaps. So you have to be a little patient and you have to sometimes go back in and work several times because this is paper mache after all. It's going to take a little time because it's bumpy, but it's so worth it when it's finished. Finally, the last thing that I did, whoa, there you go, little guy. After I finished applying my color, I went through the Mardi Gras costumes I happen to have here in Louisiana in my closet. And I found these lovely feathers on the, that I pulled and I cut from feather boas and other costumes. And I went ahead and I got a hot glue gun and I glued them right on the top. Now, you might not have feathers, but I'll bet you if you look around, you can find something. Pipe cleaners, buttons, 
jewels, sequins, little funny pieces of fabric, even pieces of paper cut into long strips can be wonderful decorations to really make your sculpture look as magical as you want it to look. So when you finish with your sculpture and you've decorated it like this, you're all set. You can share it with a friend or sit it on a shelf. Now, what if you don't want to use markers? What if you happen to have paint? That's terrific. Go for it. You can paint your sculpture too. And on this little sculpture here that I made, you guys will remember I made more than one. This sculpture I made magical by applying color and paint. And I also have to admit, I went a little nuts with the feathers on this one. I couldn't help myself. He had to have a tail. He had to have a little top knot. I mean, who could resist? But when I painted it, I just painted it with ordinary temperate or acrylic paint. And in terms of the paint, it doesn't take a whole lot. In my case, I got a used piece of styrofoam from a takeout container. I put a little dab of paint right here and right here. Let me grab my brush that just fell. There we go. I put a little dab of paint here and here. And then I found that if I took the paint, I could change the value by mixing the colors together. And that helps make my sculpture kind of exciting. So sometimes I would take some of the blue and I would make a little coin sized area and you want to keep your mixing areas kind of small about the size of a quarter maybe a little bit larger and by gradually adding white I'll hold it here so you can see the color's not so great in the video but you get the idea by gradually adding a little bit of white one step at a time I can create a value scale lighter or darker colors that then can go on my sculpture now, when I go to apply the paint to my sculpture, there's a couple of things that are really useful to keep in mind. I'm getting some paper towels and having those handy. When I go to paint my sculpture, I don't want to put the paint on in big lops. Now, if you're a younger painter, this is important. We tend to take a brush, we tend to load it up with paint like this, and it's awfully gloppy. And then we just plunk it on our sculpture. But guys, that's a bad idea. It's much more sensible to only take the paint you need. So take your brush and then just dip, boop, just a little bit of paint. You don't need a lot. And then when you're ready, you can go ahead. Actually, I'm going to get a different color there. When you're ready, you can just gently apply it and then smooth it all over the sculpture. I'm going to put some on the bottom here. So when I put it on, I don't have a whole lot of paint. I do a little bit at a time. And then I spread the paint out as best as I can. I don't want to leave it all glopped up on my sculpture. Now you notice I've got areas that are really dark blue. I've got areas that are really light blue. I've got areas that are kind of in between here. And I even have thrown in some other colors. There's some soft purples here. So I changed my value. This is a sculpture that's mostly monochromatic, meaning it's mostly done with one color. So changing my values, my darks and my lights of that color helps make it pretty interesting. So you can go ahead and you can use paint on your sculpture as well. After your sculpture is painted, you can go into it with other things to make it more magical. In my case, I got a gold Sharpie. And if you look really carefully here, you can see that I went ahead and I outlined all around certain areas that I painted with lovely gold circles. I even put some gold decoration on the neck, gold detailing on the face. And then, of course, finally, because I could not resist, I went ahead and I cut up yet another feather boa and I stuck feathers all over the thing. But you don't have to use feathers. You can use sequins. You can use buttons. You can use pipe cleaners. You probably have a zillion things around the house that you could find and that you could put onto your sculpture. So folks, when you're finished, either using markers or using paint, you are going to have a couple of really festive and extremely splendid magical beasts. You can give them to a friend. You can play with them. You can write stories about them. You can draw them and make a comic book story about them if you want to. You can share them with a friend. You can give them to your mother on Mother's Day. There's tons of things that you can do with your finished sculpture. Of course, you can also just sit back and enjoy them and then try making another one. So I hope you've enjoyed this Magical Beast project. Happy color application time, folks. Happy creating. Stay safe, be well, and good luck.